No, it's just such a cute song. I mean, I should Google the name. I should know the name of it, right? Like, one quick Google, one tick one. Yeah, so I fell in a hole again. But trust me, our ringtone did say Finn. Now, if you're like me, in that you're older than 20 and born in the West, not have a bad hairstyle, you'll have grown up with a Nokia phone. Exactly which one will obviously differ, but the noises the little irritating pieces of metal and plastic made will most likely not. Everyone generally had the Nokia tune. Now, because Finnish marketing is, well, very Finnish, you'd be forgiven for not knowing that Nokia is even Finnish. Nokia is the name of a Finnish town and a company that originally made welly boots. Yeah, well before they started making the world's toughest phones, they made boots. Which were also super tough. Perhaps something happened near Tampere that made them permanently scared of breaking things. Although the company was one of the biggest names in mobile technology, one of the main reasons they aren't a household name anymore is due to their inability to seek new changes and embrace the future. They were so bad at seeing into the future, they started making Microsoft phones. But do you know what isn't Finnish? That ringtone. And it's not even the original. The way it's meant to be played, as per Francisco Tareg in Gran Vals, it ends in an E, not an A. They used a slight variation on a famous piece from a Spanish guitarist from the 1900s in order to irritate people who were just trying to cradle their Tamagotchis to sleep or whatever people did in the 90s. But did you know that wasn't the only ringtone you got with Nokia's? Well, I knew, because I was that kind of kid that would play the ringtones one after the other and annoy my siblings in very long car drives. The Nokia 2110i came out in 1994 and it had eight ringtones, but only the last was the Nokia tune. Option 7 was a little ditty that had a long history in Finland during the continuation war and played a vital role in Finland's military. But how did a folk song that became one of the first ringtones help save Finland? Well, to learn how this happened, we have to go back to the early 1940s and beat the shifting border between Finland and Russia. Here, I have a bomb and that's a problem. I don't want to be here when this explodes or I want to be somewhere else when it does. This means I have to trigger the explosion when I'm far away, as someone I don't like trigger it, or like now have a timer running on it and hope I set the time right. I could run a really long cable to the device to activate it, but I have to make sure nothing will interrupt that signal, because the signal will degrade over distance and the wrong person in the right place can make it completely useless with just a pair of snips. If I use a bad guy trigger, I have to hope that they stumble fully onto it without noticing it at all. The thing is, we have to hide it well enough to not be seen, but not too far that it will be triggered. So let's say we've hidden it well enough. We could use trip wires or pressure sensors to trigger it, but these are specific to who trods on it. An anti-tank mine could be wasted on a moose, and conversely, an anti-personnel explosion might only slightly irritate a tank. Now, if we use a timer, like we have here, we have to be amazingly sure in the time we set it. If not, it could be useless or damaging to our guys. Right, so I barely know how long to confidently cook potatoes without testing them all the time. Never mind me trying to estimate tactical movements in deep forests and of both the enemy and us, so doesn't seem like the smartest option here. It's season for not only handle and peg meta. Timo, no one pull me. Not on kire. Milan toy again, Rayata. Uh, okay, well there is actually one last method we can use. At this time, there was a bomb that needed no cables, no pressure sensors, or a clock. And it used an almost genius mechanism that allowed it to be triggered even when the operators were miles away. This means you can wait for confirmation or just make sure your site is safe before you blow up bridges and whatnot. It's actually fairly simple in its construction in theory. You just take a bomb and attach a radio to it. Once you have this weird musical mind, you then attach a tuning fork to it. So that means whenever this thing wiggles and dances with the, the note the radio is playing, the thing can just blow up. Okay, so bomb, radio, fork wiggle, bang. If we get the bomb to explode when that note is played, that means we're kind of limited in the codes we have, since these are all just single notes coming from the radio, and there's not actually that many. But if we make each radio have three forks that dance and wiggle, that means we can code them with chords. It makes them slightly safer to use as well, as well, one note could be accidental, three just seems much more definitive. Now, this is the genius part. Because it's all being coded using these sounds, we can actually duplicate the tuning forks amongst lots of mines and have them all explode at the same radio signal. Or conversely, you can make lots of unique ones and have them set up individually. Now, okay, we've made one of these bombs. We just have to know the code, name it, and then figure out where to put it. Well, let's make this one E, G, and B, because I like E minor, and let's name it Ona. What? Menu Zuvotanya. Okay, well, that's the last part of this puzzle solved for us. This is a Russian mine. We should be nowhere near this. We should be nowhere near this. Well, not so fast. This mine can't be triggered. 
The father of Finnish radio, Jokko Pohjanpalo, took one apart and then made every single one of these mines useless because of one mistake. They made them all operate on the same frequency, 715 kilohertz. All we have to do is fill that frequency with lots of noise that varies a lot. If the radio can't get any clear signal, then there is no boom. Now remember how I said we're at the shifting border between Finland and Russia? Well, there's a Finnish song about exactly that. Sakyal van Porka is a song about how Russia stole land from Finland during the Winter War, and Finland sees this as a reminder of how they need to get that land back. The song is also quite fast and changes notes quickly and... Well, you see where I'm going with this. So in response to these terrifying radio mines that can go off at any minute, Finland drove a truck to the border and transmitted the folk song for about five months without break at the same frequency as the mines. The song was perfect because it successfully jammed and disarmed the mines whilst basically chanting, You may have the land, but we still got the song, if anyone tried to listen to the radio at that frequency. How'd you bombs like those frequencies, Russia? Even though Vipore was laced with around a thousand of these bombs, only eight of them were managed to be set up with radio signals. This then became the war of the airwaves between Russia and Finland. Now, Russia tripled up the transmission strength, and then Finland just retaliated by just upgrading their transmitters. You know how people sometimes get into those music fights where each party gets louder and louder to try and drown out the other? Well, it's a little bit like that, apart from it's got hardcore polka music and radio codes instead. Finland played the song long enough for the batteries in the radios to just completely die out. Well, they actually think the batteries died about three months in, but have you heard the song? I think two extra months is totally worth it. So the song became one of the heroes of the continuation war, and then about 50 years later it appeared as a ringtone in Finnish made phones that were shipped around the world. But this isn't the only time Finnish folk songs have been rattling around the world. Thanks to memes, Ia van Polka is known as either the leak spin song, or that meme of the drumming guy and the vibing cat. Maybe there's a weird niche for these things that come from Finland? Well, I wonder what will be next. If we're up to me, it'd be Sakyar van Borka again. Once you add drums, it just slaps. Oh, I almost forgot. Viva Sintima Pai Vasuomi. Or just happy birthday for us English speakers. <laughs>